for today's music business tip, I'm going to be discussing are mechanical licenses needed and how to legally post cover songs. Now, I have two videos on this channel that talk about how to legally post cover songs. I go into detail about kind of how they work and I'm going to discuss it all in this video, but I'm going to make sure that I have a playlist for all my understanding copyrights is linked down below for you guys, especially if you're watching this a little bit later, because on that playlist, I'm not only doing things like literally showing you how to file your own copyright in the United States, but I've added, you know, the videos where we do the news stories on what's happening so you guys can learn through real situations, real lawsuits, real contract, you know, disputes. So it's a really, really good playlist on the channel. Um, make sure you check that out. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe to Top Music Attorney because I'm releasing videos all the time to help you guys with your music careers, your music businesses, and, you know, while my clients pay a lot of money to get this information, I'm giving it to you for free because I love your faces and I appreciate you being part of my community. So, number one, when it comes to just, um, when it just comes to cover songs, why do we do it? We, as artists, have a tendency to want to do cover songs because it's great for marketing, right? You give people an opportunity to hear your voice, to hear your talent, to hear your guitar playing, to hear your drums, you know, without needing to sell them on a song. Because if you're trying to sell them on your original music, you have to sell them on you as well as the song. So you kind of eliminate one step and you have a higher likelihood of capturing fans who fall in love with you, who fall in love with your voice if you are a singer, for example. So, you know, doing cover songs is such a great way to market yourself. Okay, so that's why we do it more often than not. When it comes to copyright law in the United States, the way it works is that we hear a lot about mechanical licenses, okay? In order to make your own version of a song, you need to get a mechanical license or you used to, okay? Caveat, there's some exciting updates we're gonna discuss. So, you know, um, we talk about getting mechanical license, which are compulsory, which means any person could go and get one of these licenses without having to get permission from the actual rights holder. So that makes it really simple, right? So all of a sudden now we can go through companies like Harry Fox Agency, Easy Song Licensing, and we're not gonna actually have to go to Lady Gaga's team or Lady Gaga to get permission to cover a Lady Gaga song, right? Or Metallica or whoever it is that we're covering. So that's great. And the, the reason why is because under copyright law, there's a list of all these exclusive rights. If you made the song, you own it. So you have all these exclusive rights and one of them is the right of reproduction, right? Making new versions. And so that's why when it comes to making cover songs, we need to make sure that we are getting these licenses, which is how the original songwriters get paid. The mechanical licenses are pursuant to 17 USC section 115. And so this talks about phono records, right? So this is like the old school way of how we used to reference songs, sound recordings. If you guys are, are ever seeing on a recording, you'll see like a C in a circle and that means of course copyright. So copyright owned and you'll see a record label name, you'll see an artist name. If you ever see a P in a circle, that also means phono records, but the copyright of it. Okay, so just a little FYI, I had a client ask me that specific question. So I was like, I should tell you guys too. All right, so the way that it has worked for many, many years is that it was easy breezy. When it came to getting a mechanical license, you could just go through Harry Fox Agency, Easy Song Licensing. But the the difference that happened in the last year, okay, it's been it's been a little bit of a year and change. There was the mechanical licensing collective that went into play. In the United States, the mechanical licensing collective is a nonprofit. And as of 2018, they went into place for the purpose of being a company or a nonprofit, I should say, an organization that is a collective of where all the money goes for your mechanical royalties. And then all you need to do is go sign up, right? So you go set up an account. So then what the MLC did is it created a relationship with the digital service providers, which is Spotify, which is Apple Music, right? So where, wherever your music goes. And then came up with an agreement that said, hey, DSPs, hey, Spotify, you're gonna pay these mechanical licenses to our collective. That way, when we get paid, 
all we have to do is pay the artists. All we have to do is pay the songwriters. All we have to do is pay the publishers. So the idea was to simplify this whole process. And then that went into play as of January of 2021. Okay, so, you know, as far as kind of what this means to you, we'll go through that and what you need to do to make sure you're collecting. Because guys, as I understand it right now, there's about $400 million that the collective has and it hasn't paid it out to songwriters and publishers because they haven't gone and set up accounts. Now, my understanding is that you do have three years in order to do this. So I'm kind of giving you guys a little, you know, once over so you know. But we're going to get back to the specifics of this video, which is how to post cover songs illegally, why this all matters. Okay. So whereas we used to have to go and get a mechanical license, which covered your version of the song and only the audio. We've talked about this and we're going to go through it again. The audio is covered by a mechanical license. The visual is not. But now the question is, do I even need to get a mechanical license? Because the MLC is now in place. And as of January of 2021, if I give my music to the DSPs, Spotify, Apple Music, then the collective is dealing with it and they're going to pay who they need to pay. So the answer is, and music distributors are saying this as well, you don't need to get your mechanical license anymore because the music platforms are required to pay those mechanical royalties to the people who are owed. Okay, so yay! Because that means that's one less step that you need to worry about, okay? But the other piece of this has to do with, well, what about the visuals? Because what we do know is that the visuals, videos, music videos, uh, lyric videos, any visual element is not covered in what we're talking about. Is not covered by these mechanical licenses, not covered by, uh, you know, the collective, right? We are required to go and get sync licenses now. And that's where things get a little bit tricky, but there is a workaround and there is a loophole, luckily. When it comes to, let's say, YouTube, YouTube is the predominant place that we all post our videos for our cover songs, whether it's something just at the piano or you do like a more full production music video. And getting a sync license, you know, it is obtainable. It's just very difficult because you're having to go then to the record labels or the publishers and work out a deal and pay these fees. And so what you find is that a lot of artists just simply don't do it. And they have a huge growth, right? Because these cover songs end up becoming very profitable. They will get hundreds of thousands, if not millions of subscribers, and nothing ever happens to them. And the, the question is, why is that the case? And I have the answer. Now on YouTube, YouTube's worked out kind of this loophole because it has arranged agreements with a lot of the major record labels. And so what the record labels do is that they go, well, because we know that there's kind of a content ID in place, they will know when the cover song is for a particular song. So guess what? Your video will be claimed by the record label and say, you know, Universal is claiming your song and all of the monetization ad revenue that comes from the video. And that's all they're gonna do. They're not gonna, you know, essentially file a strike. They may, okay? And I'm gonna say this with a caveat because the state of the law, which says you gotta get the sync license, you gotta get that permission, that's where it's at. However, it's not practical because we have hundreds of thousands of people who are just uploading cover songs, right? And so it's more profitable for the record labels, for the music businesses to go and just claim the ad revenue. And then, you know, on the back end of that, obviously they're getting free promotion for the original song. There's that argument, but the loophole is created because of these arrangements between the company's record labels and YouTube. Because YouTube is hosting these videos, this is something that is happening. And so that's what we've seen. So, you know, for as, as obviously an entertainment attorney, my job is to kind of talk about the state of copyright law, explain to you guys why it is the way it is and how it works, which is why I kind of went through a little of that procedural history of how we got here, how it works. But the great news is now, you know, you don't have to go and get that mechanical license, which is one less step that we have to go through. While it is a very easy process to go through, you want to make sure, if nothing else, just check with your distributor. Just make sure that your particular distributor is kind of doing what they need to do. And the answer across the board so far has been all the major distributors that I've spoken with 
that they are not requiring that mechanical license. They are distributing cover songs. And so that's the state of where things are at. So guys, you know, I'm kind of doing one of these cover song update videos about every six months or so because there are changes that happen and it's and and i'm excited to be kind of bringing you you know not only the little tips and tricks but practically how you do this i mean i've had conversations with artists who are kind of just getting back into music for taking you know after taking a break and they have a lot of questions about how this is going to work practically and then sometimes we get into the whole you know what genre should i do how should i do it video, you know, setups and live streaming and all this stuff. And that's part of branding that we'll get into. But logistically and legally, that's everything you need to know in a nutshell.